Most people live in one place, often for their entire lives. They never know what it's like to live anywhere else. They never have a change of scenery, and they never give up on the place where they're from. I want you to get comfortable living in more than one place, not only now, but for years to come, and I'm gonna tell you why. Perhaps you're someone who is living in the same place that you grew up, you keep thinking, yeah, you know what, things aren't as good around here as they used to be, but you never make the move. I remember years ago, I went to visit a friend of mine, and his wife said, I'm going to die in this city. I was born in this city. I'm going to die in this city. And I thought to myself, if that's your attitude, you may think that you're doing the right thing. You may think that you're bringing stability to your life, but you're actually costing yourself a lot of money. And you're allowing wherever you live to dominate your life to where you're going to have a lot less freedom and a lot fewer opportunities And if you followed the two ways I'm going to tell you to go and live in multiple places. The two angles, number one, are you want to split up your year. I don't want you to live in one place just at any one given time. I have homes around the world. I have places where I spend time some years, and especially as I get older, I want to spend more of my time in fewer of those places, but I'm never spending time in just one place. Now, I don't have children, but even if you do have children, I know people who have three and four kids where at least they spend the entire summer somewhere else. They spend the winter break somewhere else, and many of them homeschool. They live in different places all throughout the year the same way a single person did. They follow what I call my trifecta method. Four months here, four months there, four months somewhere else. People have been talking about this for years. You follow the sun. If you have homes, if you have residence permits, if you have citizenships, the things that we say you need here at Nomad Capitalist, if you have those in three different countries, you can split your time up, you can dramatically lower or even eliminate your tax bill, and you're going to see what's happening in different parts of the world that your business or your investment portfolio is going to benefit from. Because one of the things that you're seeing, if you just live in, let's say, the United States, where I'm from and where my friend and his wife live, you're never going to know what's happening in Asia and how the world in Asia is, is taking off. You're going to miss those investment opportunities. If you never go to Latin America, you're going to miss out on what we've seen in our business. There's a lot of people in Latin America who want our services. And if we were just sitting around in the United States, we would have never seen that or understood how to talk to people in Latin America who want our help. We would have left a whole diverse source of income on the table. My living in different places around the world, just on an annualized basis, means I have more opportunities. I learn a lot about how different cultures work. It helps shape who I am as a person, it helps me create more self-awareness, and it creates a lot more money in my investment portfolio and in my business. So that's the first part. You want to cut up your year. And again, that can be just as simple as, we're gonna get a residence permit in Europe and we're gonna spend three months there every summer. We're gonna get a residence permit in Latin America and we're gonna spend enough time there part-time to work towards citizenship so we can have a backup plan. That's the first angle. But the second angle is, I don't want you to ever get comfortable saying that even if you move to a new country, that this is the once and for all solution. One of the things that people tell me when I say, hey, move to Malaysia, move to here, move to there, I don't tell anyone explicitly where to live. I say, understand your options, work with someone like Nomad Capitalist, figure out the places you should go, the residence permits that you have, the citizenships you should have, how moving overseas can dramatically lower your taxes. I say, figure that all out, and you choose where you want to go that suits your goals. But people have this idea that if I go to Malaysia, what could happen there in 20 years? Well, what could happen anywhere in 20 years? I bet most people watching in the Western world didn't think five or 10 years ago that the things that are happening now would happen. We have more folks coming, almost like refugees from the Western world, saying, my country is falling apart. I have no idea what's happening. I've been watching you for years, but I never thought I would call and want to work with you. But things have gotten so bad. And I got a friend who tells me my superpower is I enjoyed um, you know, some parts of my upbringing. Certainly not everything is perfect, or else I probably wouldn't have had the same motivation to leave. But I enjoyed certain things, and yet I don't have now, at 39 years old, this desire, this need to go back and sit the same diner that I sat with my friends at when I was 17 years old. I look back, and I'm glad I had that moment then,
but unlike so many people that I know who they they're still going to that diner they're still acting like they're 17 years old in some sense like they need that my superpower the friend says is you can let things stay in the past and focus on the future the reality is no one country is guaranteed to be good for the rest of your lives you know I might live another 40 or 50 years uh, someone being born today might live a hundred years what country what empire if you're living in a country like the United States lasts that long it's the countries that are really heading in the right direction now that have a chance to last that long but you know what anything can change at any time and so the idea that as you follow the first step and you spend more and more time outside of your country maybe you move full-time maybe you do as i did and you move permanently you don't want to go back or you just want to go back for christmas by doing that to think that's the once and for all solution for you, let alone your kids, to me, is just silly. And so I believe there's a geographical solution to every problem. We have to stay focused in the present. You're looking for places when you're looking for where to move that are going in the right direction. You're looking at economies that are heading up. One of the biggest problems right now in the Western world is because there's so much competition for jobs, for businesses, and there are businesses today that might have gone to the U.S. 30 years ago, now they're going to the UAE. Now they're going to some, you know, up and coming country, you know, crypto business is going to Malta or, you know, whatever. You're seeing wages stagnate. You're seeing people increasingly becoming frustrated in Western countries. Uh, and those countries are heading in the wrong direction. You're seeing just, you know, record numbers of people saying, I think the country's going in the wrong direction, the U.S. or Canada, or the U.K. Uh, now people are even... They're even upset with democracy. Look at what happens. They want to cancel rent. They want to cancel mortgages. They want the government to raise taxes on you. That's so much it's changing. You want a place with positive momentum, whether it's where you live, where you bank, where your company's incorporated, where you invest. And to do that, you have to be willing to spend some time outside of your country, if not all of your time. And you have to be willing to accept this is what works today and stop using as an excuse the idea that, well, you know, what could happen to Singapore is if this and that happens and China does this and if that does that, that's going to totally fall apart. Well, number one, that's why you diversify. When my family talked in the mid-90s about moving outside the United States, they ultimately did not. The idea was, let's move to one country. We're going to take everything there. What you do now in the 21st century is maybe you move to Malaysia. You open a bank account in Singapore, but you put part of your money there. You open a brokerage account somewhere else. You open a few bank accounts somewhere else. You have a trust somewhere else, and that has its own bank accounts. You are diversified. So, okay, even in this extremely implausible scenario that some people, these people invent scenarios in the comments section, like, we get it. You don't want to leave your country. So you have to, like, invent how, you know, Godzilla's coming for Singapore. Yes, 0.01% chance, but it makes you feel better. Like, meanwhile, you know, where you're living, it's burning to the ground. But let's imagine, let's put all of our focus on that 0.01% chance over there. You are not going to put all your eggs in one basket. You want to have multiple residence permits. No matter, even if you don't leave your country, you want multiple residence permits. If you're an American, get a Mexican residence permit. You can always walk across the border. Get a permit somewhere you can, you can charter a jet to and affordably fly. It could be a Caribbean island. It could be somewhere else in Central America. If you're in Europe, it could be somewhere in Eastern Europe where they're doing things a little bit differently. You know, get some residence permits, get a citizenship that if yours, you know, becomes, it falls out of favor, you've got somewhere else to go. Diversify your cash. Don't own all your cash personally. Have different asset protection structures. And if you do that, you're going to dramatically reduce your risks of being in one country. But let's not start to imagine problems in the nomad capitalist way of extreme geographical diversification. In, you know, when we're currently sitting in a country with everything, everything there, having uh, an ETF which invests in some Asian stocks is not diversification. And I'm not saying this to pick on people, but I'm saying this to preempt the objection that there's no perfect place. We know there's no perfect place. And you know what? Bad things can happen anywhere. I think they're, they're a lot less likely to happen uh, in a lot of the countries that we talk about. Up and coming countries with up and coming economies where people are optimistic about their future. I think that's good. You have countries that are very tax competitive. Why? They realize that's where their bread is buttered. Maybe one day they'll become fat and complacent like the United States and others. But you know what? For now, enjoy it for what it is. And for most people, you know what? 
if your country gets better 20 years from now, the rest of the world gets worse, you can always go back. Why not live for today and enjoy lower taxes, enjoy more freedom, enjoy knowing that you're protected? Making an intentional decision to leave your country or at least start to diversify and spend some time out of your country is it running away. Do you know what's running away? What's running away is when everything hits the fan in your country and you're running for the border. You're heading for the hills. Because I think a lot fewer people are going to be out there with their guns and fighting back against the man than, you know, than you think they are. I mean, look at what happened uh, in some of the war zones recently. We've seen a couple of new wars in the last couple of years. What do you see? A lot of people arriving at the airport in Bangkok, for example. People running for the border. They want to get out. Yeah, some people are taking up arms. Some people are joining the military. Some people are being forced to join the military. But a lot of people are saying, get me the hell out of here. I'm not saying I would do any different. Uh, but that's what running is. And I'm not, it's not a judgment, but people are literally running. Making an intentional decision. Planning years in advance. Where are the good places? I'm an entrepreneur. Where am I respected? Let's look at the data. Let's look at the facts. Okay, these are the places that work. Let's put together a plan. Let's work with Nomad Capitalists. We're going to get 11 different things, and that's going to cover us in all these different ways. That's not running away. That's asset protection. That's freedom planning. That's protecting your family. The 20th century alone saw more than half a dozen empires simply collapse. The idea that your country, particularly if it's one of the big kind of empire-like countries, is going to survive in its current form forever, to me, is just silly. And so here's what you can do. First, evaluate how you would like to live. And just, just remove all the dog from the table. I know people who have four kids, and they spend time in four, five, six countries a year. It's possible. It may not be what you want, but let's eliminate, well, you know, I have kids, it's really... You know, you guys with your, with your, you know, your kid, childless lifestyle. Listen, throw it all the double. How many places do you want to live every year? Nothing wrong with saying, I want to live in one place. I would prefer, if we're going to be making a move, you might as well save some money to fund the move and to fund getting the other accoutrements of the nomadic capitalist lifestyle. Find a place that's more tax funded than where do you live. It doesn't have to be zero tax. It doesn't have to be super low tax. But if you're going to live in one place, tax friendliness comes into the equation. If you want to follow my trifecta method, for example, you live in, you know, four months uh, times three, three different places, depending on what those four, three places are, the taxes may already, you know, be at zero or very low. But how many places would you like to live? How much movement do you want to do? What are the kinds of places that you like? And so you want to plug in your first, second, third, et cetera, positions. Then you want to figure out, you know, what's my plan B? What's my plan C? What's my plan A? How many, you know, plans deep do I want? Uh, and then you kind of adjust over time. One thing that might be worthwhile is just kind of dipping a toe in in the early locations. So Mexico, some Americans would push back on this. It is, you know, other than the language, relatively culturally similar uh, to the United States. There are other parts of Latin America that have certain similarities to the United States and to the mindset of the culture of the United States. A place like Ireland, tax-friendly. Not if you are necessarily from there, but if you're a foreigner, it can be very tax-friendly. I'd argue if you're from certain parts of the U.S., you'd, you'd get along better in Ireland than you would moving to, you know, Dallas, Texas. Uh, so maybe you start off, you know, simple with something like that to where you're not going to want to come back. If you go too deep into this, if you move to Laos, you know, you might give up after a year or sooner. So maybe one thing to consider is what's, you know, plan A and that's one that's kind of easy. And then we kind of slowly diversify plan B. Okay, that's a bit more aggressive. Plan C, that's a bit more aggressive. Plan D, that's a bit more aggressive. You're accumulating residence permits. You're accumulating citizenships. You're adjusting over time. You're getting more comfortable. The longer I live overseas, the longer I'm comfortable living overseas. Uh, and then if you have, you know, these, you know, levels of, of, you know, depth to your plan, if you go to Thailand as your plan A, and that becomes an issue, you just move on to plan B. And I think people look at this and they say, well, you know, this isn't being loyal to your country or don't you want to go loyal? You know, it's okay to respect where you're from. But to me, this is the one area where because of some construct that people call patriotism, we exempt where we're from, the people there. Many people do this in their own families, uh, but certainly the people around you, the government, they're exempt from competition, no matter what happens. Now, people complain about it. 
and they raise up and they get all angry. We got to get rid of Biden or we got to get rid of Trump or we got to get rid of whoever's in power. Justin Trudeau has got to go. You really think if the politician you don't like goes, do you think everything's going to be perfect again? Because let me tell you, it won't. Donald Trump didn't lower your taxes to Dubai levels. No conservative politician in any Western country will or can. So we've got to get rid of the dogma. The reality is this great unknown that we're taught, you know, if you're patriotic, oh, everything else is the great unknown. I think you're all a lot less likely to have stuff taken from you in a foreign country as a foreigner. I'm not saying in every single situation, but you don't go to the countries where they're like actively taking people's stuff. The United States confiscates about as much property as probably any other country in the world. They break into people's safe deposit boxes. I mean, they do all kinds of stuff. And if you're in the United States, you probably think like, well, that doesn't happen to me. Well, what if it does? And what if you went to Thailand and they just let you buy stuff and left you alone? But like, that's what this dogma, this narrative, like, well, I'm from here, so I have to be loyal. Here's how I would approach it. You're shopping. The same restaurant, the diner that I went to with my friends when I was 17 years old, I wish them well. I hope their restaurant continues to thrive. But guess what? A lot of restaurants go out of business. What do you do then? You find a new restaurant. Maybe you were friends with the manager, but were you really friends? Like, are you going to, like, like spend your entire life longing to go back to that restaurant? I look at the world as we want to plan for the future and we want to live in the present. And people are living for the past using a whole lot of excuses for why they don't want to make a change, even though it's dramatically better, and tying that to some kind of loyalty. In my world, if you're a member of my family and you mistreat me, you're treated the same way anyone else would be. I don't let my country, I don't let my family, I don't let anybody. Nobody has a leg up. I think it's a lot healthier way to live rather than holding on to the past and trying to bring it into the present. Find the best places that serve you financially, serve your freedom, serve your lifestyle. The people who are spending their entire lives complaining about Biden, complaining about Trudeau, complaining about Trump. It's a miserable way to live. And for me, people watch what I say and they say, why are you angrier? I say, because I left that behind. And I didn't let having to go to the same diner get in my way of living in the present, being as positive as possible, and yet preparing for the future where maybe what I'm doing now may no longer work. That's why I think nobody should be tied to one place, not just today, but for the rest of your life.